Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Busting Rainbow Six Siege. Today we are mess busting the reworks to Fuse and Mute. And we're going to start with Mute. So his jammers now jam in a sphere. So if you didn't know previously what happened was there was a cylinder that came up from the Mute jammer that went up to about the height of a reinforced wall. But now that has changed and it is a sphere. So it is the same radius as that cylinder but now of a spherical in shape. So it doesn't actually protect an entire reinforced wall anymore, which is certainly a curious move for the developers to take. And this example here shows how one mute jammer can no longer actually protect almost two reinforced walls. Now you're protecting a far smaller amount of area. So that is confirmed. I do wonder if there's gonna be a change in the future where you can actually put these mute jammers on walls. Then the sphere to me would make more sense. However, now that the jamming signal is a sphere, it means that you can actually jam stuff below the jammer, which you couldn't do previously. Now, I haven't actually figured out anything that is tactically useful when doing this, but other people smarter than me might well be able to find out some really cool tactics. This example here that I made up isn't useful, but it shows how you can jam a wall below it that might well confuse someone like an ace or a thermite who comes up and attempts to get through it and can't figure out where the jammers actually are. One thing that is really good about this change is that it makes a lot more sense. If you're a brand new player and you come down and you put down a mute jammer on a table, you would expect it to totally jam drones that drive underneath it, which it currently doesn't do in live, and that really doesn't make any sense at all. Whereas this sphere actually is much more intuitive, and I can imagine for new players that'll be far easier to understand and learn. But certainly it's confirmed you can now jam things underneath the jammer. And that gets you up to speed on the new changes for Mute. We're going to move on to the Fuse rework now. But I will say for Mute, it's interesting. It's definitely a nerf, I would say, overall. And unless you can kind of figure out really good strategies for jamming things underneath it. But I do see it as a potential step towards actually being able to place a Mute jammer on a wall then it would make more sense because you would be able to jam an entire reinforced wall with it. And that would be pretty cool. And we already have the update that brought in the ability to put stuff on electrified walls without being destroyed. So I'm wondering if that is potentially where this is going to go for Mute, but maybe not. Cluster charging a castle is now slower. So in this update for the rework to Fuse, he is now able to go through reinforced walls and hatches with his cluster charge, which is very exciting for sure but they've also brought those mechanics from the reinforced walls over to castle so it now has to actually dig through before it can get in and that means if you're on the other side of a castle it is now far easier to know it's about to come through and you can prepare yourself one grenade is always going to get through but you can easily shoot the tube to stop it getting more grenades in so this is definitely i would say a buff to castle it's nothing huge but it definitely helps him and just getting the warning that a cluster charge is about to happen is very handy. And like I say, being able to stop it after the first one is definitely great as well. So that is confirmed. Now it takes longer to actually fuse through a castle barricade. Fusing a reinforced wall or a hatch leaves an actual hole that you can shoot through afterwards. So now that we know that obviously grenades can get put through a reinforced wall and sent out the other side, presumably there's a hole there, right? Well... No, it will actually make holes in the soft part of the reinforced wall, but the actual metal reinforced wall will stay intact. It's very much like Kali's Lance, and it will kind of leave a mark, but no actual hole that you can shoot through, which is very good because that would have been a bit OP for Fuse there. However, something that is OP is that one grenade from Fuse's clutter charge through a reinforced wall or a hatch will definitely get through. So you do have this warning of three seconds that the charge is making this like sparking on the wall or the hatch so you can be prepared to shoot it however even if you shoot it immediately it will actually manage to get a grenade through no matter what this is scary because there's always potential that that one grenade will take out a whole bunch of utility on the other side or you know potentially kill someone but certainly you have the warning so you can take out all the other grenades that's good but it is scary obviously being on the other side of this getting a grenade fired at you but it is busted one grenade will always get through no matter what as long as it's not electrified or something like that now something that was very surprising is you can actually fuse a black mirror this is 
scary and weird to look at because obviously you don't usually see this side of the cluster charge and if you were a Mira in this position right now, obviously I don't think this is going to happen much. Like certainly for one reason, you can actually open the Mira window and destroy the actual cluster charge, but it's still scary to look at. And if Fuse runs up and melees the actual window beforehand, then fuses it, of course that's going to be scary to have grenades flying out of your Mira window. But certainly it is confirmed you can cluster charge a Mira window. If it isn't shattered, the effect of actually doing it will shatter it. And yeah, that is scary, but confirmed. Now a big winner with this rework to Fuse is our Rooney, because if her lasers are up on reinforced walls or hatches, even hatches that appear to be too high up, the lasers will actually stop all of the grenades getting through, which is great. Now, of course, they go into a cooldown after that, the last like 30 seconds, and Fuse does have four cluster charges, so she's not exactly the best counter, but it is definitely worth it with this rework to put a bunch of these lasers on reinforced hatches just in case, because it could well save someone from getting any grenades through. Now, just like most other gadgets, if you put a fuse cluster charge on a wall that is electrified, it'll be destroyed. And of course, if you want to be risky, you can bandit trick these fuse charges as well. And here's a quick example here showing off Kaid electrifying a wall with a cluster charge on it just to demonstrate. And of course, if it's already electrified and you go and slap the charge on, it'll get fried as well. So definitely avoid electrical effects with fuse, but that's confirmed. Now, if you just so happen to actually see Fuse put a cluster charge on a mirror window, it is good to know that if you pop that mirror window, it will fall down before the cluster charge actually goes off. So that is useful. Of course, you don't want to get into the area where that actually happens. You'd preferably kill the Fuse. And most likely, if he's this close, he's probably preemptively melting the glass so you can't actually see it. So it may not be perfect. But if this situation just so happens to happen, then at least you know you can actually pop the window and save yourself from getting at least one grenade inside your defensive perimeter. And then the final myth comes from the patch notes and it's the developers saying that they reduced the amount of bounce the grenades have. So I went and checked this and at first I thought this was busted because I couldn't really see any significant difference between the old and the new version. But putting it side by side, I did notice. So first of all, back in the day when you fired a cluster charge into a room, there was a good chance the grenades would actually fly out either through windows or corridors because they had so much bounce. But that got reduced down to a tiny amount of bounce that we see in the live version these days. But this new version, the bounce is almost gone. It's reduced down to so small a bounce that I'm not even sure it's worth bouncing anymore. And basically the grenades fly out, land on the ground, move a tiny bit and then explode. So it makes it easier as a defender to avoid them and to predict where they're actually going to land as well. But certainly that is confirmed. But there you go guys, that is you now up to speed with the reworks to mute and fuse. Let me know in the comments below what you think of them. Of course the mute one I think is more of a nerf whereas the fuse one is more of a buff. But in both cases, it's certainly going to change how you play and counter these operators. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content and you want to keep up to date on Rainbow Six Siege, hit subscribe and like, and I'll catch you next time.